before we uh, get to Scott Egan, I want to um, bring up about it's come to our attention that um, one of the board members has submitted questions in advance for other people, including uh, former selectmen and residents. And has everyone got this information? No. Got to them? Well. I have, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. The problem is that submitting questions to the auditor from private citizens on the morning of the meeting where an auditor is expected to show and answer questions from the board as an abuse of the auditor's time and is an untimely imposition where the questions are detailed and require potentially much more study time before answering can be carved out during the day of the meeting. It has been two weeks since the board has had draft copies of the audit from Christie. So another problem is if a single board member has questions about the audit, they should be submitted to me or the finance director and not to the auditors independently. <clears throat> this could lead to confusion on the part of the auditor as to whether one selectman is speaking for the board or just that the selectman himself or herself. And there may be a cost that comes from submitting these questions. A selectman should not unilaterally submitting, shouldn't be unilaterally submitting questions to our auditors that come from private citizens, whether those citizens were former selectmen or not. The proper channel would have been to obtain the permission of the board as a whole and let us decide what we, if we want to be doing that. So, uh, Mr. Bean. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's a, uh, uh, a multi-year uh, formal lines of communication. Uh, you were uninformed about the information request. The rest of the board was. The finance director was uninformed. Town manager was uninformed. And until uh, or very early this morning, our auditors were uninformed uh, for the request. And it's just not appropriate. Thank you. Basically, these questions that have been submitted are not going to, we're going to uh, come up with a, a way, a protocol of dealing with these questions, but they're not going to be discussed this evening. Mr. Waddell. Uh, I, I just saw this, so I have nothing to say on it. I'm going to suggest it right now. Mr. Bridal. I've just seen it when you, when you mentioned it. That's until uh, Selectman Bean handed it to me. So. And Mrs. Wolseley. I submitted the questions in behalf of me, and they were kindly brought to my attention by constituents. And if people ask for information through their selectmen, whoever that selectman might be, I think that's perfectly acceptable, and I expect uh, at least a, a rough uh, answer from Mr. Egan, whom I hope you will introduce shortly. Other comments? Yeah, and I would just say, uh, again, that's uh, a three-page email. I read those. I was in the office on other business this afternoon, uh, and the finance director um, uh, informed me of that. Uh, she was not informed of this information request. The town manager was not informed of this information request. There is the concern about um, the 15,000 other residents in town, if they all have information requests. Uh, where does this process go and what does that do for the billing for our auditors? Uh, there's no control, there's no leadership, and it will result in mayhem. You have just stated, Mr. Chairman, that you will develop a protocol to have this, uh, these interrogatories uh, answered uh, by the board, and I think that's fitting, I think it's appropriate, and it's only professional staff communication. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Mr. Bridal. So like I said, we won't be dealing with these questions tonight. We will decide a protocol and we will deal with them later. Thank you. Did you have any other comments, Mrs. Wellesley? Well, I have questions for Mr. Egan if you let him come up. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you.